Hi everyone, today I'm going to be sharing with you a beginner's guide to GoodNotes 6 or just to the GoodNotes app in general. So this will be covering anything that you probably need to know if you're new to the app and don't really know how to use it. GoodNotes is definitely one of my favorite note-taking apps and it has so many great features and advantages and maybe just things you didn't know you could do with it. So hopefully this video will open up all those things for you and you will now have a good understanding of how to use the app. Okay, so here we are. Um, I'm kind of nervous about this. I haven't done one of these types of videos in a while, especially this top-down shot I'm quite unsure about, but we'll see how this goes. So I guess we'll just get started because this is going to be a long video, I'm guessing. So we have a lot of co to cover. Here we have GoodNotes, as you can see. So we have the new icon for our GoodNotes 6. If yours looks different, it's probably because you're still in GoodNotes 5. Let's go in there and we're going to take a look first at the UI and just how everything looks within the app and how you kind of navigate the app. So here you can see this is your main area which is here in documents So you have all your folders here and if you have any documents that aren't in folders It's also gonna be here in this section. The folders are customizable in color title and you can also now add icons and things with the newest update they added colors and icons usually it was just like a blue folder with a name so to create a new folder you just click on the plus button here and then select a folder and here you can go ahead and title it whatever you want you can use scribble if you want to to write in with your apple pencil so folder you can add in a color so let's go with pink and then you have oops your icons <laughs> And you can see you have different icons for different things. I hope we get some more icons because these are nice, but I feel like they're pretty limiting. So I think we need a few more. Then you'll see you have these little stars here. So these are if you want to favorite a document. So you can just go ahead, click on that star and makes it red. And this adds it to the favorite section here, which is this is a little sidebar where you can toggle between different things. So we have our favorite section. And again, as you can see, all of these have favorites. So you can favorite folders and documents, but you can also favorite pages within a document, which I'm gonna get to. But depending on what you have favorited, you can view them all here in the favorite section. So that's where that little star is in the corner of your documents. And then while we're on the topic of the sidebar here, we also just have search. So here you can search within your documents. So what's nice about note taking documents on iPad, usually they have handwriting recognition and they can kind of convert it to text or detect exactly what you wrote. So if you're searching for a specific thing that maybe you just writ wrote in your handwriting, it will still pick it up even though it's in your handwriting. So I know I have a document on user defined objects. Oh, that's in the title. I want to um, search something that's in handwriting. Oh, okay, let's go with unit. As you can see, this is my handwriting that it picked up. So here you can see it shows what I searched here at the bottom. It shows the results. So this is one of two results. I can go to the next result and they show it here as well. So in your document, when you're in a document, you can also search. It's here at the top, uh, which we'll get to, but that is how you search from the main menu that is here at the side. And then we have here shared. So this is if you have any shared documents via cloud or something like that. So you have shared documents here. And then lastly, we have marketplace. So this is again new. I know we had somewhat of a marketplace in GoodNotes 5, but they made it its own designated section in the app. You have so many different things here that you can go ahead and get. So they added in some things from other creators. So I think you can sign up to be one of their creators. Um, and then you can add in your own planners that you create that you can buy from other creators. They have color palettes, um, then they have planners. There's also a subscriber special. This wasn't available when I first downloaded GoodNote 6, but all these are free if you are a subscriber of GoodNote 6 and pay the monthly subscription or maybe the once off. Um, then you can go ahead and get all of these for free, these subscriber specials. And then you just have different sections, so planners, stickers, and templates and then lastly we have education so education is um, some interactive workbooks that you can use i'm pretty sure other people can also sell these like you can see here but i know these ones from goodnotes as well they're really nice and they have like math detection so detect exactly if you if you made a mistake with a mathematical equation or something um, it corrects you and it's just a really cool interactive workbook that you can work through so this is really nice as well so that's all for Marketplace. I don't want to spend too much time in here, but you kind of get the gist. It's where you can find templates and things for good notes.
And also just what I want to show you for the UI here in this new section, as you can see, you can create a bunch of new things. Um, you can also go ahead and just double tap on that and it will create a quick note where it just makes a note of the default note paper and then it just creates a quick note. So if you just want to quickly jot something down, you don't want to create a whole notebook, choose all the templates, just double tap on it and it will create a blank note paper for you. You can adjust what you have as default. So for instance, if you double tap, it's going to use your default note paper by going to settings here and going to manage notebook templates. So here you'll see these are now the defaults. So you have your cover and then the paper, which is very specific to the quick notes. You can adjust exactly what you want as your default. Um, you can adjust the color. Again, we're going to get to more of this when we're going into detail about how to create a notebook. But here you can select what is default when creating a quick note and things like that. And also here in the create new section, we have some other things. So study set is if you want to make like flashcards or things to study. These are really cool as well. I haven't played around with this quite a lot, but you can go ahead and title this. So I just put it as definitions. You can go ahead and choose the language. You can choose the color. So this also has color selections. Click on create. And then you have two pieces of paper. So you have your question and you have your answer. So you can maybe like put in like the definition, the word, and then the actual definition of that word. You can type there. And to create a new study card, you just swipe to the left and then it just makes a new one. And you can make however many you want. And you can also select what you want to be your, let's say, medium here. So if you want to use text, if you want to use an image, or if you just want to write something, you can go ahead and tap and then what goes into this editing mode. So if you want to draw something, maybe like a diagram or something, you can go ahead and draw with this. So that is how study sets work. And once you're done creating your study set, you can just click on study here at the top. You can go to smart learn or practice. I'm just going to click on practice. And then all you need to do is, so I have my term here, tap on it. It shows you the definition. Next, term two, definition two, next, term three, definition three, next. So it basically just works as flashcards, but you have it in GoodNotes. So that's really helpful, especially since GoodNotes is very primarily for students or most people that use it are students. So this is really nice. So that's the basics to study sets and how to use them. And then again, with the create new, we have folder that we've managed and then you can also import an image that you want to maybe write on in GoodNotes. You can scan a document, take a photo, import a document from files if you have anything you want to import. And then we have quick note that you can basically just double tap like we mentioned, but or you can just go ahead and go here to quick note. So that is the basics of the UI and just how to navigate and use the first page or the opening menu of GoodNotes. So now let's cover how to actually make notebooks. And this is probably the most primary use of GoodNotes. So we're going to go to the plus button here and we're going to go to notebook. So creating a notebook is really easy. I'm going to first start with the cover. So you have a bunch of covers here that you can choose from in GoodNotes. Um, again, the marketplace has a bunch of things. So here you can see everything that you can buy from the marketplace or these are imported from marketplace. So these are the free ones that I mentioned that you get if you're a subscriber. Um, so this is one that I've made, um, but let's create, let's choose this one quickly so I can show you how to customize this. But again, you have all of these and they usually have some default colors. So if you go to the color section here, you can choose the color that you want. So these are just the defaults that they create for you. This is a custom one that I've made already that I can select. So it does save your custom themes and you can go to customize template to make a new one. So you can, you can title your template. So let's go with pink. So you can choose the background color, the foreground color, and then the accent color. So this is really nice. So you just go here and you can go ahead and choose any color that you want. So let's go pink foreground accent color can be, let's go black. And then lastly, we can choose a background color. Let's just go with light pink. So then you can click on apply and that will now be saved as a custom template that you can reuse. And as you can see, it changed it there. So again, that's the same with any of these covers. So you have like worms, seeds, they have so many stats. And if it has these little dots here at the bottom, it has some preset colors that you can use. So here you can see it has black, blue, white, some presets, and then again, customized template. So that's how you customize the color and things of notebook templates or covers. But also what you can do is you can choose your 
language. You can choose whether you actually want a cover for your notebook or you just want the paper. And then you can adjust the size. So they have some sizes here that you can choose from. So A3, A5, whatever custom here, you can choose whatever you want for width and height. And also you can go here and choose between landscape and portrait. So that is how you shift between those two. And then you're good to go and we can cover paper. So paper is very similar to covers. Again, you have all these different types of papers. You can import your papers. Here you can see it has an import section. And then again, we have marketplace sections here. These are also some papers that I've imported over the years. So again, very similarly, you have the option to address the color, customize template. You can choose the background color. So if you want black paper and you want a foreground color to maybe like red or something, you can go ahead and do that and then click on apply and then it will save that. But I'm just gonna go for white with this. And again, you can choose portrait, landscape, and your sizing. I'm gonna go with landscape actually because it's gonna be better for this guide and walkthrough. And then we can just go ahead and click on create. You can also name your notebook here. So let's maybe give this just a title and click on create. Okay, so now we're actually getting into the gist of good notes the actual note taking so let's get started we have a lot of covers so first i want to cover the toolbar here at the top so the main tools we have so first off we have our pencil tool or pen tool um, here you can tap on it to get some more options and you have three different pens you have your fountain pen so this is pressure sensitive as you can see that line means it's pressure sensitive you can also adjust how the tip sharpness is so if it's not so sharp or very sharp. You can see it adjust there in this little graphic. And also you can adjust the pressure sensitivity. So how sensitive it is to pressure. So how hard you tap with your Apple Pencil on your screen. It depends on how thick that line is gonna be. So you can adjust that as well. Um, and then we have our ball pen here, which is just one thickness, no, no other settings or anything. And then we have our brush pen, which has kind of the same thing, which has this pressure sensitivity slider where you can adjust how pressure sensitive it is. So that is the three pens. So my favorite is the ball pen just because I don't, I'm not a big fan of like the varying thicknesses. Um, but let's just scribble these out so you can actually see what each of them look like. So first off, we have the fountain pen. Um, I might as well just name it here. So here we have our more sections within the pen tool where you can adjust the thickness of each pen as well as the color. So I'm just gonna choose one of these thicknesses. You can adjust it. You have three presets here for your thicknesses. So I'm just gonna adjust the thickness as I want. So you can slide the slider to choose how thick you want it. I think I'm gonna go with three. I'm not quite sure how it's gonna look on this paper. And I'm just gonna go with black. So this is the fountain pen. Also, if you make a mistake with two fingers, you can double tap on your screen and it will undo. Or you can just tap on undo and redo here at this little corner. Like I said, it is pressure sensitive. So I'm gonna first draw lightly and then I'm gonna put some pressure. So lightly and then pressure. So as you can see, the thickness varies as I apply pressure. And again, I can adjust this with the um, settings here. Then we have the ball pen. Let's go ahead and write. Like I said, this is my favorite just because it doesn't have any varying thicknesses. It's just one thickness. And then we have brush pen. I'm gonna write in cursive just because that feels right for a brush pen. My cursive handwriting in GoodNotes sucks to be quite honest, but that is the brush pen. So those are our three pens. Go, let's go ahead and take a look at the other settings that we have here. So first off, we have draw and hold. So this is for drawing shapes. So here you can see you can turn this off or on. So what draw and hold means, so if I'm gonna draw a circle and I hold at the end, it's gonna snap it into a neat shape that I can resize and whatever. So if I turn draw and hold off, if I draw the circle and hold, it's not gonna do anything. It's gonna stay that wonky circle. So you can turn that off or on, but that is always helpful to have on, especially if you're like just drawing straight lines. It's really helpful. And then we have snap to other shapes. So for instance, I'll have that turned on. If I draw a square here, and maybe I'll draw like a line like this, it's gonna snap to that line there. So it snaps into place. But if I do that again, and I turn snap to other shapes off, and now I draw that, it's not gonna snap to that shape, it's just gonna stay its own separate shape. It just sometimes makes it more neat. So as you can see now, if I tap on this shape here, 
it kind of snapped it into place on this shape so it's just more neat so depending on what you're drawing you can turn that off or on but i just find it helpful to be turned on and then full color is also an option it's also really nice so if you have a color selected let's go with purple and i draw a shape of a circle it's gonna fill it with a light color it's kind of very hard to see but it has a light purple filling Let's choose another color like orange. It fills it with a light orange. So if you undo one time after you draw that, it's gonna take away the outline and it's just gonna be a light shade of that shape, which is really nice if you wanna just add like a cute shape and then maybe make some notes inside that shape. It's just a really cute addition to your notes. So that is how shapes work with just the pen tool. I'm gonna just mention this now. We also have a shape tool here, so if you are knowing you're just going to draw a bunch of shapes now, you can just move to the shape tool and then just draw and it's going to automatically go into a shape. So you don't have to do the draw and hold, it's just going to automatically snap into a shape. This also has some other settings like require hold to snap, but that kind of defeats the purpose. I feel like if it's already turned on in pen tool, snap to other shapes full color exactly like we have with a pen tool. Okay, let's just clean some of this up here. So that shapes within the pen tool. Then going back to the pen tool settings, we also have pen gesture. So this is new to GoodNote 6. So we have scribble to erase and circle to lasso and then also erase shapes and highlighter you can turn that off or on for the scribble to erase setting so how this works is if I wrote something like let's just write scribble my handwriting is really suffering in this video then we can just go ahead and with our pen tool selected with the ink selected scribble over that word and it will erase it. So this is really helpful to quickly erase something now if you have significantly messy handwriting sometimes it will erase it because it thinks it's your scribbling because your handwriting might be messy. So I've heard that some people have that issue, but again, it's just really helpful to just go ahead and scribble and it will erase it. So that is a helpful option. And again, like I said, we have the option here for erase shapes and highlighter. So if you have a word in a shape that's also highlighted and you turn that off and you do the scribble to erase, it will only erase the words and not the shape in the highlighter. I hope that makes sense. And then we have writing aids here, which is also new with GoodNote 6. So we have recognition language and check spelling. So this is new. If you have a spelling mistake, it will underline it in red and show out that it's a mistake. So let's write mistake incorrectly mistakes <laughs> and now as you see it's underlining it so now it will detect your spelling error you can tap on it and it will show you what it could have been that you wanted to write you can tap on that and then it will correct it for you now it's not 100% gonna mimic your handwriting I feel like it rarely does but if you just quickly want to correct something it's it's nice that it can do that but again, you can turn that off here in writing aids. You can turn that off if it's annoying, if it completely keeps detecting the wrong thing. You can turn that off if it's annoying or you can just change the language if you're writing in a different language. And also in advanced settings, I just wanna point this out. You can go to custom words and add in custom words that you want it to not see as a wrong word. So maybe it's a shortening of a word or something. You can add in custom words. I have a whole video on tips and tricks on GoodNote 6. I'll have that linked if you want to check that out. But yeah, that is how you can work around the check spelling mistakes. I actually completely forgot the circle to lasso to point this out. So if you have a word and again, you have a pen tool selected, you can circle with a pen tool selected and you can circle that word, hold down on that circle and then it turns into a lasso. It's really helpful to quickly again, move something around, hold that down and then move it around. So that is circle to last so that you can also have as a pen gesture. Now let's go to our next tool, which is the eraser. You have three sizes, small, medium, and large, and you can just erase. So right now you have three different erasers. You have precision, standard, and stroke. So let's go ahead and draw three lines here so I can show you the different types. So with the eraser selected, I'm gonna go to precision first. So this is actually, this wasn't always in good notes, but I love that they added in. So if you wanna be precise with exactly where you want it to erase, you'll see it has this little circle. It will only erase the part of that circle that you're going to erase. So you can be very precise with exactly where you want it to stop erasing. Then we have the standard eraser, which was what we we're mostly used to. So this erases a part. I don't really know how it decides which part to erase, but it erases like a part, as you can see, it's not following the circle entirely. It's helpful, um, but yeah, it's not my favorite. And then the stroke eraser just erases the entire stroke. So the entire 
stroke that you made goes away. So for instance, let's go to this word here again. We have your precision, so exactly what you want to erase. You can go ahead and exactly erase as you want to. Then we have the standard eraser, which is just gonna erase it. As you can see, I don't really know how to explain it, but you can kind of get the gist of how it works. And then we have the stroke eraser, which is just gonna, which is just gonna erase that entire stroke, as you can see. So those are the three different types of erasers. You can also turn off or on erase highlighter only. So that will work if you have a word highlighted and you don't want to erase the words, you just want to erase the highlighter, you can have that turned on and then you can even erase the word, but it will just erase the highlighter. And then you can also click on clear page if you just want to erase everything that's on your page. Auto deselect is really helpful. So if you are on your pen tool and you switch to the eraser tool, once you're done erasing and you lift up, it's going to switch back to the pen tool. It's just really easy because it just switches back quickly. So you can find that maybe helpful or not, I don't know, but that's always been helpful to me. And that is everything about the eraser. Highlighter is pretty self-explanatory. You can turn off or on draw in straight line in the highlighter. So if you draw a line, it's gonna automatically snap into a straight line. If you have that turned off, it will stay in like a squiggly line. If you write a squiggly line, no matter how straight you're trying to go. So you can have that turned off or on. I usually just keep that on because it makes it really neat. But the highlighter, again, you have some three presets like the pen tool that you can choose the sizes of. And here we have our colors that you can go ahead and choose from. You can go ahead and add a new preset for colors. Click here to add. You can go to choose the hex code, paste that in there, or just choose from this grid here of colors. That is the highlighter tool. Okay, we already covered the shape tool. Now we have the lasso tool. Like I already showed you, you now have the circle to lasso, but you actually have a designated lasso tool as well. What's helpful with this is all of these toggles. So you can choose exactly what you want a lasso tool to toggle. So this is helpful in cases that you have maybe a lot of images and things and you want to lasso just a certain thing. So I can I want to use this as an example. So as you can see this is an old little scrapbooking thing that I made and here we have an instance where you have an image, another image and you have some text but say I just want to select the text. I don't want to select the image and everything else. All I need to do is turn off images and if you have text over here you can turn that off and only have handwriting turned on so then if I last so it's only going to select my handwriting whereas if I have images turned on it's going to select literally everything so it just helps to be more specific with exactly what you want selected and what you want to move. So that's probably my biggest tip with the lasso tool is playing around with this. It's hard to differently explain, but you kind of get the gist of it. So that is how you can go ahead and use the lasso tool. Now we have here this element section. So this was not always in good notes, but it's such a helpful section. So here we can add different elements that are basically like stickers so this are these are elements that I actually got from the marketplace again with that subscriber special but you can add in your own you can find some on etsy there are a bunch of people that sell stickers nowadays for good notes they have some defaults in here as well that are default with good notes and here you can go to the marketplace and then it will take you to the marketplace and show you all the stickers as you can see here they have so many sticker sheets that you can use so in order to create a new set of elements you just click on this plus button here and here you can go ahead and click on add photos to add in any photos to elements or you can go ahead and click on import from and import them from files you can give them a title so let's go ahead and just type in stickers here and let's just go ahead and click and add something from photos what i actually want to do is i'm just going to go to photos with a split view so i'm just going to drag photos open this side here we have this image i'm going to select the subject of this image that's cool with ipad os 16 and 17 I'm going to drag that in here to the element section and that added that as a sticker without that background. That's really helpful. I mean, you can do this with other things. So this is my dad's new puppy. I can go ahead and select that as the subject, drag that in there and it adds it as a sticker. But you get the gist. You can create your own sticker selection. Basically click on create and now I can go ahead and drag that in here and I have a cute sticker that I've created from GoodNotes. Also, what is really helpful if say you have a certain template that you often reuse that you drew in GoodNotes. So if I have a signature heart maybe that, oh my goodness, that's not good. Why can I no longer draw hearts? Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and make a cute little hard graphic thing that maybe you often reuse. So maybe something like that. You can go ahead and lasso that 
and tap on it. So then you have all these options that take come up. You can click on add element and choose where you want to save it. So let's save that to stickers. So now when I go to elements here, it's now created that drawing into a sticker that I can now reuse, I can resize it, and it acts as a sticker. But what's really cool, if it's handwriting, you can still interact with it as if it is handwriting. So as you can see, you can erase it like it's still like a drawing. So that's really helpful with elements. Then we have photos here to add in any photos from your photo library. So I just added in this photo. You can also go ahead and tap on photos. You have some options. Again, you can click on add element, but you can also go here to crop and you can crop your image. So you can make it into this rectangle section. So this will allow you to just choose exactly how you want to crop it rectangularly. <laughs> and then we have freehand here where they actually can draw out exactly what you want to crop it out as and click on done. And then it crops it like that. It's not the best work, but you get the gist. So that is how you crop images in GoodNotes. Really helpful. Again, going back to that diary here, I do use this a lot in that. For instance, here I drew out my hand. Then we have text. So text in GoodNotes is pretty self-explanatory. You just go ahead and make a text box and then you can type out or you can use scribble with your Apple Pencil to write something and then it will convert it to text. So this font here is not what maybe your GoodNotes is set to. This is a font that I actually imported. I will have a video linked where I go into detail about custom fonts on how to install them into your iPad and use them in GoodNotes. I will have that video link. I'm not going to cover that in this video because this video is already going to be pretty long. But that is a custom font that I added in. But here you can see I can go ahead and choose the font for that text box. I can change the font if I want to. I can also go here, choose the sizing and also the alignment if you have maybe like a paragraph. And also this is the line spacing between like two lines of text that you can adjust. Then you can adjust your color. Um, here are your presets and you have again that block that you can go to custom and here we have our text box style so you can go ahead and just choose one of these and then it will add a box around your text they have some cute styles here but you can actually create your own for this as well by going to advanced and then you can go ahead and draw out exactly what you want for that so you can adjust the border color if you even want rounded corners, the size of your border, if you want a shadow to that text or not, if you want padding, and then you have uh, your own preset border around your text. So this is also really helpful. I didn't really find myself using borders all that much in GoodNotes, but that is an option. And then maybe you want this font that you now have. So I have Babis here as your new custom or default font. You can just go here and select save as default. So now every time I'm gonna write something. So let's write text. That's now gonna be my default font. So now I have to change it back again, but you get the gist. So that is how you use fonts and text in GoodNotes. I'm gonna to go to a different page for this next section. So let's go to this planner here. So say I wanna view this planner in all its magnificent glory, but I wanna write something in this little box, but I don't wanna zoom in <laughs> every time. I can use the magnifier and um, you can slide this how tall you want it to be on your screen or not, maybe like halfway. And then I wanna to go to the ninth and I wanna write in here. I can do that and it shows up there, but it's magnified here and I can still view it there. So this is really helpful for a lot of people um, for note taking. You can adjust exactly how zoomed in you want it to be by just dragging in or out as you can see. And that is all for the magnifier that I actually wanna cover. It's pretty self-explanatory, but yeah, that is the magnifier. You can also use these arrows to navigate through your page if you don't wanna drag it here or here. Can just use these arrows and then it will take you through your page. Then we have pointer. I think this is really helpful for presentations, I'm guessing. So you have two pointers. You have a laser one, which is just like a dot. So that will go like this. So if you're sharing your screen, this could be really helpful to like just show exactly what you're pointing out. Or you can go to this laser here, which is also really nice, but this one that kind of has like a, it stays for a while and then it disappears. So if you wanna, have more of a dramatic presentation, I feel like this will be nice. So that is the laser in GoodNotes. Also, before I forget, here you can see I have this one here tabbed in this little section. That means that I saved it to favorites. Like I previously mentioned, you can save folders, notes, and also specific pages. 
you will see this one is saved because it's saved to favorites. Now I want to cover this toolbar here at the top. I'm just going to quickly go through this. First off, we have our pen. So if you tap on that, it's going to take away your toolbar. So it's going to be basically in reading mode. So this is really helpful if you have planners like this that are hyperlinked. You can then navigate through those hyperlinks very easily. But if you have um, that turned on and you show your toolbar, it's not as easy to access your hyperlinks. As you can see, it doesn't just work with one tap. You have to like hold it down and then click on open link and then it will take you to that hyperlink. But yeah, you get the gist. It's not as good. So if you want to just go into reading mode to easily access your hyperlinks, you can use that little tool there. Then we have typing mode here, which allows you to just freely type. I don't love this because you only have one set font. You can adjust the font. You, you just don't have a lot of customization with this. But if you just want a blank document just to type some things out, you can go into typing mode and it just makes this little big text box the entire size of your page and you can type out. So that is how you go into typing mode. And then we have here our voice recorder. So if I start talking or just click on it, it's going to immediately start recording. So I'm going to go to drawing mode and I'm just going to draw as I'm talking. So then turn that off. And also, if you want to go ahead and play that back, you can go to your voice section here. So you will see if I start playing, this drawing will be grayed out kind of, it will be lighter. And then when it gets to the part where you actually drew, it will kind of go over that grayed out part so that it kind of follows along as you're talking. So it just follows along as you did whatever you drew. I hope that makes sense, but this is really nice if you want to follow along with lectures and see exactly at what point you made what notes or whatever. It's really helpful. So I, I highly recommend using this, especially if you're a student. And that's all for these three little menu bars that I want to cover. Also, when you have a document like this with a bunch of pages, you can go to this section here to view all the pages in that document very easily. You can even hold down, you can drag them around. You can go down here to choose add page before, add page after. So if you want to add a page after that specific page, you can choose the template that you're currently using or some custom papers. You can even duplicate that page. You can move it to like a different document. You can export that specific page to a PDF image or to a GoodNotes document. And this view is just really helpful. You have your thumbnail, so that's just like every page viewable like this. Then you have your favorites, like I previously mentioned, you can favorite certain pages. And then you have outlines, which you can go ahead and create outlines in a document by going and clicking on, maybe I want this to be part of an outline and click on add page to outline. And you can title it. So I'm gonna title this July, click on add. And then let's go to August and then also add that to outlines and title that August. And then you have your different outlines where you can see exactly at what page that is. So this is kind of like making your own chapters within your notebook. So if you have like certain classes that you wanna to go to quickly, you can add them to an outline and then they will be here. So that is all for this page thumbnails section. I'm pretty sure you get the gist of it. Like I said, you can reorder pages here. You can just view them all at a glance, add pages afterwards, you can select certain pages that you maybe wanna either like rotate, you can export them all together. So if you have specific pages in a notebook that you wanna export, you can again move them to a different document, you can delete them, you can copy them. Um, and also you can just like select all them and then move them together if you want to. So that is how that section works. Also like the thumbnail section where you can add pages, you can also just click here to add a page and then you can go to select current template or just use the templates that you have here and you can choose where you want to add the page. You want to add it before, after or as the last page in your document. So it's just going to select after and it's going to duplicate that and it's going to create it as a new page. And like I mentioned, the exporting in the previous section, you can also export just from here. So you can click on the share option. You can click share to collaborate. So if you want to share a note with other people, if you want to export this page, export all. So that's the entire document. Or if you want to print it, you can go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and click on export this page. You can select PDF and you can show options for that. You can also choose an image or you can choose a GoodNotes file, which means it can be edited again in GoodNotes. And you can also go into presentation mode where your entire screen, so they will be able to see everything. 
you can mirror present your page so they won't see like the toolbar and things like that they will only see like the pages so that will be helpful again with the laser tool and then they have mirror full page so they won't see like if you're zooming in on something they will just see the entire page but you will be still be able to like zoom in if you want to see something specifically but they will still just see the entire page then we just have these three dots here with some more settings so we have your page number here at the top you can click on copy page you can rotate your page add the page to an outline you can change the template from here so if i go to my beginner's guide section i can go with this writing and everything i can go here and click on change template so let's go and just change this to let's change it to purple and click on apply and it will apply every that entire thing to this page but the writing and everything will still remain the same then we have go to page so you can just go to a certain page you can clear this page you can delete this page that you're in right now and then we just have some other settings like scrolling direction so this is helpful if you don't like the like kind of swiping okay like swiping between pages like this and you want to have it vertically like this so you can just scroll like this maybe that's more your preference so there's a the cover and everything you can go ahead and adjust your scrolling direction i'm just used to the horizontal by now and then you can go to document editing and add a few other things which i'm not going to go into but you have some more settings there as well so i'm pretty sure that's everything that I wanted to cover. I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything, but let me know if there's anything that I missed in the comments. But yeah, that was good notes in a very long nutshell. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. So that was my entire guide tutorial walkthrough of GoodNotes 6. I really hope this helped you to understand the app more and get a grasp of all its features. I know this video is probably pretty long, but I just wanted to give you a good understanding of the app and how it works. So I really hope this helped you out. If it did, give this video a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any other things that I missed or just any tips for GoodNotes. Again, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.